we will firstly look at the area of indices and powers. An index is a number, at the top right hand corner of a figure, which denotes a power. The power of a number, is how many times the number is multiplied by itself. A few examples of powers, will now be coming up on the screen. You can also see how these powers are simplified down. We have 2 squared, is equal to, 2 multiplied by 2, which is equal to 4. 2 cubed, is equal to, 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which is equal to 8. 3 cubed, is equal to, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 27. 3 to the power of 4, is equal to, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 81. 4 squared, is equal to 4 multiplied by 4, which is equal to 16. There are certain rules you must remember, when you are working with indices and powers. The rules are now coming up on the screen. Rule 1 states that, a, to the power of m, multiplied by, a, to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of m, plus n. Rule 2 states that, a, to the power of m, divided by, a, to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of m, minus n. Rule 3 states that, a, to the power of m, all to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of m multiplied by n. Rule 4 states that, 1 divided by, a, to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of minus n. Rule 5 states that, a, multiplied by b, all to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of n, multiplied by b to the power of n. Rule 6 states that, a, divided by b, all to the power of n, is equal to, a, to the power of n, divided by b, to the power of n. Rule 7 tells us that, a, to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and that, a, to the power of 1 is equal to, a. Now just a quick note, in regard to your calculator. Most calculators, allow you to calculate the powers of numbers. The button may be marked, x to the power of y, or, x circumflex y, as shown on the screen. You should check this out, and try a few examples, when you get a chance. We will now look at the area of algebra which is sometimes called, manipulating a formula, or, changing the subject of a formula. For these types of questions, you must remember that, what you do to one side of the equation, you must do, to the whole of the other side. In these questions, you may add the same quantity to both sides, subtract the same quantity from both sides, multiply or divide both sides by the same quantity, and perform the same operation on both sides. For example, squaring both sides, or getting the square root of both sides. We will now look at the area of simultaneous equations. Simultaneous equations are two equations, that you must solve, usually to find the values for x and y. The intersection of two lines, is found using simultaneous equations. There are two types of simultaneous equations, that you might see. The first is two linear equations. The second type is when one of the equations is non-linear. This means that it may have a squared, or cubed value in it. An example of simultaneous equations with two linear equations is, 3x, plus 4y, is equal to 10, and 5x, minus 7y, is equal to 3. An example of simultaneous equations with one linear equation, and one nonlinear equation is, x, minus 3y, is equal to 10, and x squared, plus y squared, is equal to 10. We will now look at the area of quadratic equations. Quadratic equations, are equations where the main variable is squared. They are used to describe many things, like the movement of objects in space. Examples of this include, the motion of footballs, cars, satellites and so on. A quadratic equation takes the form, A, X squared, plus, B X plus c, is equal to 0, where x is the only variable. a, b, and c are just numbers. 
a, b, and c can be any number depending on what the question is asking, x, is also a number, which, when inserted into the equation, proves the equation to be true. i.e., this means that it will make the equation equal to zero. There are three ways in which we can solve these equations, or in other words, find the factors. The first is, solving perfect squares. The second is, solving equations by factoring. The third is, solving equations using the quadratic formula. So, let's look at the perfect squares method. The types of quadratics that can be solved like this are equivalent to a simple linear expression multiplied by itself. The first example of this is x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2 all squared. The second example of this is 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 2x minus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 3 all squared. Let's now look at the factoring method. This method is used when a quadratic equation is equivalent to the product of two different linear expressions and can be easily solved. Let's look at an example. We have the expression x squared minus 8x plus 15. When this is factorized we get x minus 5 multiplied by x minus 3. But how did we get this? We need to find two terms that multiply to give plus 15 and that add to give minus 8. The two values that satisfy these requirements are minus 5 and minus 3 as shown. Let's now look at the quadratic formula. This is used for the more difficult equations to solve. For example ones that might involve fractions, decimals etc. This formula is useful because it can be used to solve any quadratic equation written in the form a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. The formula states that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c all divided by 2 a. Remember when using this formula that all the top line is over 2 a. We will now look at the area of cubic equations. A cubic equation is an equation in the form a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d is equal to zero. An equation with a cubed power is called a cubic equation. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it of some use.